Okay, yeah, so I'm back, but not in Massachusetts, where I've formerly lived my entire life, but in Antalya, Turkey, where I plan to be for some time. Uh, but that's a whole other story, and today we're talking about the VTA ST70 amp. As mentioned in the intro, uh, I built it for my pal and favored artist, Dave, at my own devices. And Dave's got two great videos detailing the history of the ST70, details about the VTA kit, and his listening review. So instead of me telling you all about that, I encourage you instead to go check out Dave's videos. I'll leave links for them in the description. So now we can just focus on turning this assortment of parts into this beautiful amp. The VTA ST70 is meant to be used without a protective outer cage, so the transformers are in plain view, and they really should look sharp. But from the factory, they're rather unsightly. So let's take them apart now and repaint them. Here we go. Okay, great, let's start populating the driver board. Now these trimmers will be used to adjust the bias. We'll install them now and put them in their center positions. Yeah, so this is how I usually organize resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors before a build, and each has been tested to ensure we have no problems later. Let's get them installed. All that soldering left the board full of sticky flux. You know, that's what they called me in high school, by the way. It's really not a great idea to leave all that flux on the board, so we'll remove it now with a flux remover pen, some gentle picking, a toothbrush, and some safety wash. You know, it's funny, I always feel like a dental hygienist removing tooth plaque when I do this. Open wide. Okay, yeah, the board's looking good. Now, the chassis has a beautiful chrome plating, and I really want to cover it with masking tape to protect it while we work. Let's take care of that now. Okay, nice. Let's just quickly mark the two positions now, and we'll begin with the chassis build. Yeah, you know, I'm really happy about how the Transformers turned out, but they made us do a lot of work. So let's put them in their place. Now 
this guy looks like a transformer, but it's actually a choke. It looks like a transformer because it similarly has an iron core, but instead of two windings, it only has one. Another name for a choke is an inductor, and I like to think of inductors as the opposite of capacitors. Capacitors block DC and pass AC, while inductors block AC and pass DC. So they're especially useful in a rectifier power supply to block high-frequency noise and to smooth ripple. Let's install the choke now along with the two audio output transformers. Let's install the multi-section capacitor now, finish wiring the chassis, and install the remaining components. Yeah, so Dave sprung for these expensive Russian capacitors, but one of the four tested poorly. Let's install all four now, but we'll replace the bad one when the replacement from VTA arrives. And these things have a metal exterior with only a thin coating. So to prevent shorts, we're going to shrink wrap them first. All right, let's do it. Great, let's finish up the PC board now and install it on the chassis. Now let's install the front panel hardware and continue with the wiring and parts installation.
This potentiometer is for a modification to the ST70 that I highly recommend it to Dave. It replaces the traditional front panel stereo mono switch with a level control. And that's a fantastic addition because now you can use the amp without a preamp. Just plug a source into the inputs like an iPhone and then control the volume via the level control. Okay, let's wire it up and get it installed. Note these cool plastic sockets for scratch-free installation of pots and switches. You can learn more about them in my weekend update video, link in the description. Looks like we've got a lot more wiring to do, better get on it. Okay, looks like we mixed up the color codes for the output transformer wires. Uh, let's undo the faulty wiring and set things straight. Let's install the AC power cord now. Okay, VTA sent us the replacement for our faulty capacitor. Let's mount that in place now. Well, that just about wraps up the build, and it only took us about 10 minutes. You know, I think that's a new world record. Not bad. Yeah, but does it work? Well, let's start by testing the amp by installing the driver board tubes. Now we'll turn on the power and slowly increase the voltage. Okay, yeah, looking good. Our dim bulb current limiter shows there are no shorts, and the tube filaments are glowing. I know you can't see the filaments here, so you're just going to have to trust me. So now we can move on and install the rectifier and left channel output tubes. Okay, good. Again, no shorts and the filaments are lit. I'll just quickly adjust the left channel bias. And now we'll install the right channel output tubes. Flip on the power. Okay, yeah, again, no shorts and all the filaments are lit. Quickly adjust the right channel bias. Perfect. So I didn't really record all of the video for bench testing of the amp, but I can confirm that everything checked out really great. And if you want to see all the details about how I bench test amps, please see these videos. I'll leave links in the description. All right, let's do the finishing touches. First, let's get rid of all that protective duct tape and let that beautiful chrome shine. Now again, because this version of the amp doesn't use a protective cage, I recommended that Dave order the optional driver board cover kit. This provides a plastic shield for the driver board, and I highly, highly recommend this, as otherwise your fingers can easily touch dangerous high voltage. And it goes in place like this. Let's install it permanently now. All right, looking good. Now, for the bottom panel, the kit is provided with these horrible stick-on rubber feet, and they're really never, ever gonna stand up to the test of time. So instead, let's install these durable rubber feet that mount with proper hardware. Let's just get them in place, and install the bottom cover, and crank up the music. Yeah, this amp really sounds great, but we can't get too attached because it was never meant to be ours. Yeah, in fact, it's time to pack it up now and send it off to Dave. Geez, you know, I wonder if he's gonna like it. Hey, let's go check out his videos now to find out. Signing off from Turkey, this is Flux Condenser. See you soon. Looking for a shiny new gadget for your bench? Some good books on electronics, vintage hi-fi or old radios? Indispensable tools, cleaners or other products? Check out my new Amazon shop and help the channel. Lots of great products I actually own, use and recommend. Plus my thoughts on each one. Link in the description. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.